Alright guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about combo boxes. I've recently uh, got back into writing some WPF at work and I completely forgot how to populate a combo box in the code behind. So I thought I'd make a video on it and maybe if I forget again, which is very likely, I can refer back to this video and maybe it can help you guys out as well. Um, for those of you that want to know about combo boxes. Anyway, I got some. I found some chill royalty-free music playing in the background. Let me show you what I got. Uh, here we go. So let me know what you guys think. I wanted to get something in the background um, so it wouldn't just sound like I'm in a, in a cave with no one else. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let me know what you think about the music. If you like it, if I should just take it out in the next video. Or if you don't really care. So let's go ahead and this is from my last video um, when we were uploading files and let's save that and let's go ahead and put a few combo boxes. For the sake of things I am going to, you know, this is good practice for for us. What we're going to do is we're going to input a grid and Let's go ahead and write some row definitions. So grid.row definitions, and the first row definition, um, let's make its height. What do you guys think? Um, let's make it 40. That's cool with me. And then we're going to have a row definition of height uh, 150. So with this, with this row right here, the second one's going to do, it's just going to be some empty space. So it looks like it's going to end right here, and then maybe that's too much. Let's put 100. doesn't really matter. It's just an example's sake, but I want it to look kind of good. So let's go ahead and make another one, and this is going to hold a combo box. So let's make its height um, 30. It's cool with me. So right off the bat, you might be wondering what exactly is a combo box. Well, a combo box is essentially a drop down menu. So um, I don't want to show you uh, one until we get it working in the code behind, but um, essentially I'm trying to see if they have a picture here. They do not of the combo box. That's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the combo box in this third row second index and um, put this stack panel in the first row at zero index. Okay, so we have that and let's go ahead and make our combo box and give it a property of grid.row is two. Cool. And that should be all that we want to do. Actually, no, let's go ahead and set width and let's set that equal to, what do you guys think? 150. And what we also need to do is uh, give it a name. So x colon name and let's name it example combo box. So if we save it, my little um, thing that I made has a nice way of making sure everything's aligned properly. Okay, cool. So we have our example combo box, and now we just need to populate. So this is what it looks like. It's a little drop down menu, and then when we press on this, um, let me go ahead and start it, just so you guys can see. I got my tea here. I usually have coffee. I think it's too late for coffee. It's 8.04. I won't be able to go to sleep. Um, so I made tea. Tea has a little bit less caffeine, I think. If you ask me, um, maybe not, <laughs> uh, but that's what I'm drinking. Here's the combo box. You can see it's empty. It has nothing to choose from. It has nothing for the user to, to choose from. So let's go ahead and add some values for the user to choose from. So we're going to go to the code behind. Um, I already have it right here in the tab, but uh, if we wanted to, um, you could just expand this and click on the XAML.cs of the file. So right when the uh, constructor is called, let's go ahead and create an array. So let's just say, um, this is going to be an array of strings. So string array 
equals new array. And then let's just go ahead and give it some uh, values. So let's say, oh, I forgot to give it a name. <laughs> that might help. Combo items. Let's just name it that. Uh, and let's have the user select like a, a pop um, or soda, wherever you're from. I say both, so I try to keep it consistent. Let's say we have Coke. Uh, and then we have Pepsi. And then what else? Mountain Dew is a big one. I don't really drink much pop anymore. I've been drinking more um, coffee, tea, and uh, I've been really into LaCroix recently. I haven't had a pop in a while. Usually when I do get pop or soda, um, it's at a restaurant. But so, okay, so here we go. We have a new array combo items and it holds these three, these three values. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to set our source for this combo box uh, to this array of items in the code behind. So what do we name this? Example combo box. So we do example combo box dot picked item source, right? Yeah, item source equals combo items. All right, we'll save. I'll go ahead and hit play here. So now, when we drop down, we can select one of these three items from our array, right? There's something else you can do. Um, and you, there's another thing. I, I think you can do it in the code behind. I don't quite know how, but I'm just going to do it in the XAML. Actually, no, it shouldn't be hard to do it in the code behind. Um, but let's just do it in the XAML. And that, that property is, re is read only. And that's going to be false. So we'll see what that does. So read only is how we had it before. By default, it is read only. Here's Coke. How come that's not work? Oh, is edible. Ah. See, it helps to have documentation. So not only do we need is read only, we need is edible. And that's going to be true. So we can see what that is going to do. So now we have kind of a mixture between the text box and the combo box, all right? We get these predefined values, we get these values that we made in the array and we can actually edit it. So if I wanted to make it Pepsa, I don't know what that means. Maybe that means something in, a, in English or in another language, I don't know. Um, I can do that and that can be my item. So now I am able to edit uh, from this. I don't know when that would be useful, to be honest with you. Because um, typically when you have this, unless you're just wanting to give the user ideas and then they can go from there. That's the only thing I can think of as to why you'd want to use this and not just the text box. Because that kind of defeats the whole purpose of having these drop downs, right? But just for the sake of argument, it is there. So let's go ahead and create an event called selected. So after I select something, let's go in our code behind and check that out. Example combo box selected. And let's just do message box dot show. Um, I forget what we call it. Example combo box dot selected item, not index. Selected item dot to string. So what that should do, I didn't actually look at the documentation for this. I'm kind of just winging it. So what that should do is after we select something in the combo box, it's going to fire this event that we created. So we created this selected event and that, that event that's gonna fire and the code behind is example combo box selected. And then what we did is we took the uh, selected item, we made it a string and then we're gonna do this little pop-up that, that reads it out. So let's see if this works. Like I said, I'm kind of just winging this. Did it work? No. <laughs> 
Okay, guys, I figured out what my issue was. I went ahead. Let me save this so it formats. I went ahead and I took away the is edible and read only values. Um, and I changed the event to selection changed. And in case you ever get in a bind and you're not sure what kind of events come with a particular element, you can go to the properties um, of that element. And I think typically it'll have you right here. But if you want to look at events, you can click this little lightning bolt and it'll show you all of the different events that can fire with this with this uh, element. So what I did is I found this selection changed, I double clicked and it created this example combat box selection changed. What that did is it created a new method in the code behind. So um, I can delete my old one, that didn't make any sense. And um, I just pasted what was in that one into this one. So now when we run it, and show you guys how I expected it to work earlier. So if we click Mountain Dew, the selection did change, and now it's Mountain Dew. I chose Pepsi, now it's Pepsi. I chose Coke, and it came up as Coke. So there you go, that's how you can bind in a little bit of, of uh, event functionality with the combo box. Um, like I said, I, I forgot how to do this, so I thought why not make a video. And we can We can do another video, actually, later on talk about binding to combo boxes um, that might be useful too anyway guys thanks for watching hopefully you enjoyed the music in the background I do I think it's uh, it's soothing um, and uh, yeah I guess I will see you guys in the next video take care